You belong on every ground your feet grace, so don't ever feel out of place. Take up space and belong. This earth is your birthplace. Hey loves, welcome back to the Central Genius channel. In this video, I'm going to do a review of Intergalactic, which is a romance uh sort of anime by Kid Cudi like it's it's a animated uh movie by Kid Cudi um but it's starring Kid Cudi of course as Jabari, Jaden Smith as Jordan, Laura Harrier Harrier as Harrier as Carmen, Jessica Williams as Meadow, Timothy Chalamet as Jimmy and Ty Dolla Sign as Kai. It starts off with Javari moving into a new apartment. He bumps into Meadow in the elevator, but he doesn't see her because he's carrying a statue. So his, like, his view is blocked, so he can't see her. While he's, after he takes the stuff inside his new apartment, he goes out to get something to eat. While he's out getting food, he runs into Carmen, his ex-girlfriend. They talk and he mentions moving into a new apartment in Manhattan, piquing her interest. She's like, oh, you, you kind of like, you, you leveling up. She asks him if he's making a lot of money selling sneakers and he tells her that he works at a comic book company and they want him to turn his original character, Mr. Rager, into a comic book. She congratulates him being extra flirty and touchy-feely because like now he's talking some stuff she want to hear so like she interested all of a sudden he thanks her modestly and she tells him to stop acting like it's not a big deal he tells her she's right um and then one of her friends call her because she's at the restaurant with one of her friends and she tells him she has to go but they should get drinks sometimes he agrees and they part ways in the next scene, Jabari is at his new apartment. His friend Kai and Jimmy are helping him move in, but they're mostly smoking and just talking. He tells them about Carmen, and they pretty much advise him not to let her back into his life, and he says he won't. When his friends leave, Jabari is left alone with his thoughts. He's smoking weed and on the balcony, on the balcony contemplating DM and Carmen. After a while, he says, F it, and he does it. He meets her at the bar, and they order each, other, just order each other's drinks. Carmen changes her order from the four white wines he ordered for her and asks for the best white wine. He asks what happened to the Carmen he knew, and she says she's realized everything doesn't have to be perfect and says she's Carmen 2.0. They toast to the new her, and she announces that they're celebrating him. He orders shots, but she tells the bartender to make it six. They get drunk and party, and then they leave the bar, and she asks him to take pictures of her and mentions that she's single. He gets wet when a truck drives by. Like, he crosses the street to take these pictures of her, and, like, a truck drives by, and he gets wet. She kisses him after making sure he was good. Carmen was playing her cards right this whole, like, night. Because she kept putting the attention on him to try to make it seem like she changed. When really she didn't. She just wanted him to think that. So he could let his guard down around her and she could get back into his good graces. The next morning, he wakes up in Carmen's bed. And she's on the phone whispering something to someone who turns out to be her mom. She is talking to her one minute and then she ends up just handing the phone to him and he's like confused and he's like, I don't want to talk to your mom. Like we just had sex. Like, why are you making it seem like we about to get together? And, but he, he talks to her mom anyway. Her mom invites him to her nephew's christening. He agrees to go to be done with the conversation. But after he gets off the phone, he gets dressed so he can leave. Carmen undresses in front of him like they're in a committed relationship. And like, he basically is telling her like he doesn't want to get back into a situation. Like he just 
having fun with her. Like, this is not serious. I'm not, like, going to no Christian. I'm about to leave. So, in the next scenes, there's just, like, a period of him just getting high. He's smoking, partying with his friends, going to different spots. There were certain parts in this movie where it was just, like, music video. Where Kid Cudi would be singing and, like, Jabari would just be living his life. And I liked it. I liked everything about this movie. Like, from the storyline to the elements of his music that he put into it and everything. It was amazing. Then, after, like, this period of him partying and bar hopping, club hopping and doing stuff with his friends, he stopped. It stops with him waking up at work, crashed out. Like, he doesn't even remember how he gets here. His co-worker comes in to talk to him about his character, Mr. Rager. His co-worker tells him that it's too dark and that Cosmic, the comic company they work for, don't do dark. Jabari tells him they hire him to do Mr. Rager and he's dark and so he's not changing him. And the co-worker tells him he doesn't change Cosmic. Cosmic changes him. It's, you don't change Cosmic. Cosmic changes you. But he just, like, shakes it off and is like, nigga, whatever. They hired me to do this character. And when they saw this character, this character was dark. So he's going to stay dark. He goes home and tries to get some sleep. But he has a dream about Mr. Rager going light. And it's more like a nightmare. He's being chased by a monster and Mr. Rager saves him. But when he looks at his outfit, it's light. And Mr. Rager is like, we don't change Cosmic, Cosmic changes us. Basically, quoting what his co-worker said. So, next thing you know, he's being woken up by loud music. He gets out of bed and follows the music to his neighbor's apartment. He goes inside and tries to find the owner of the apartment, but this white man approaches him to tell him it's a private party. He asks if it's his apartment, and they get into it. Like, they go back and forth. But they are broken up by a beautiful black woman who says she's the owner of the apartment. She introduces herself as Meadow. And remember, he passed by Meadow a couple of times before he actually recognized that he was passing by her. Because he was just like passing by her at random times at first. And then like he went to her house. That's when he was introduced to her. Meadow introduces herself. Jabari is mesmerized by her, so he's, like, stuck. Like, he's just, like, staring at her, like, wow. Like, he's blown away or whatever. But he finally introduces himself back to her. They hold eye contact for a while before her friend interrupts them. Meadow offers to turn the music down, but Jabari tells her she doesn't have to. He's like, I don't want to be a party pooper. Like, trying to, like, be cool in front of her. Like, he's like, I don't want to be a party pooper. You can keep your music up. I'll be fine. She invites him to stay, but he tells her he needed to go back to bed, so he leaves. The next morning, Meadow shows up at his door and offers to take him to lunch. He accepts her offer. He gets dressed, and they go to this spot he never went to before. <laughs> Excuse me. He never went to before. She tells him they have the best burgers. And he tells her he assumed she was taking him to a vegan spot because she has the. She asked if she gave off that vibe. And he said, yeah, like you give me vegan. Like you just look like you're a vegan. And she does give off like vegan vibes. I understood what he was saying. She orders for both of them after asking him if he trusts her. Of course, he says, yeah. They talk while they wait for their food. That's when she finds out he's the artist responsible for Mr. Rager because he had been posting, not posting, he had been tagging like different spots in the city. But this takes place in New York, by the way. He had been tagging different spots in the city with Mr. Rager and she is actually a fan of him. And when she finds out, she's excited. He tells her he got the opportunity to work for Cosmic. And she tells him not to let them water down his work because he's a, an amazing artist. When their food comes, she lets him taste the burger first. And when he likes it, she tells him it's vegan. She's like, yeah, you remember when you said that you don't like vegan burgers or whatever? This is a vegan burger. <laughs> He's shocked that the place was a vegan spot because of where it's located and how it looks. 
they spend the day walking around the city enjoying themselves like they're having like a good time like they their their chemistry is very apparent as soon as they meet he takes her to the first spot where he drew Mr. Rager and she takes pictures of it and him since she's a photographer. They continue to enjoy, enjoy each other until they go back home. He tells her he had a good day with her and they hug and part ways. In the next scene, Jabari talks to Kai about his romance with his neighbor and Kai advises him not to date his neighbor then he tells him this bizarre story about how he dated his neighbor and almost got arrested for it as a cautionary tale. They go to this party that seem out of their element. Like, they're just, like, sitting there just talking to each other while the party is just, like, this weird party. It was, like, a vagina-themed party or whatever, and it was weird. Like, people was dressed in vaginas, and then it was this person that came dressed as a penis and they like kicked him out and was like this is about vaginas like yelling this is about vaginas like you don't belong here whatever and i'm like why are these men at this like feminist party because that's what it seemed like to me suddenly jabari sees meadow sitting at the bar and he shows her to kai and when kai sees her he's like oh she's fine like she's fine as heck and it's forget everything that I told you. Like, you better date her because she's so fine. He encourages the Jabari to go over and talk to Meadow. And he does. They, they speak. And then they dance. And uh, they, they, they speak to each other. They talk for a little while. And then they start dancing or whatever. And when she gets home, she masturbates to the thought of it. Like, she is feeling him. He's feeling her. But they're not telling each other. Like, they're just, like, enjoying each other's company. But, like, she, he turned her on or whatever. So, she gets home and she pulls out her vibrator and she masturbates. The two of them talk to their friends about the date and how they wanted to have sex with each other but didn't. Their friends tried to convince them to have sex. They both said they wouldn't, but when they're alone, it's all they can think about. So they end up doing it. For a while, it shows them having sex and spending time together with, within a span of a few weeks. And it's like the most sensual animated sex that I have ever seen in my life. Like, it's so sensual. It, it's, it's, it was like watching a sex scene between real people. Like, when I was watching it, I kind of kept going back and forth between images of them being real people and imaging, images of the animation. It was just so dope how they drew it or whatever. Like, it was so sensual. Like, probably one of the best sex scenes that I've ever seen. And that's, that's uh, me comparing it to another, like, romance TV show that I'm going to review as well, Sex, sex Life to me has the best like sex scenes it look it actually be seeming like porn when they be having sex but this right here felt like the same way to me like they were really having sex well they were really having sex because this is different than real people like it's a drawing so they are really having sex they seem to be falling for each other their little thing gets but they seem to be falling for each other like they spending a lot of time together. They see they seem to really like each other. And they seem to be falling for each other. But their little, like, situation gets ruined when Carmen sends Jabari a sext of her in his hoodie, half naked, saying she left, she left he left it at her apartment yesterday. And she was like, some things still fit, like, being flirty with him. Carmen annoyed me. Every time she showed up on the screen, she just got on my nerves. Meadow accidentally sees it when she's woken up by the phone vibrating. And she, like, with her eyes closed, is, like, trying to pick up the phone. And it's his phone. And she looks at it and sees the text message. It hurts her feelings, so she confronts him about it. 
and he goes to Carmen's place to break off their friendship and tells her he's seeing someone. Of course, Carmen feels some type of way since he told her he wasn't ready to date anyone. And she was like, you told me you wasn't ready to date anyone, but you really just wasn't ready to date me. And he's like, I really wasn't ready to date anyone. This just kind of happened. And I, I believe him. I believe that it wasn't just that it was her, even though he shouldn't have dated her. That was the right move. I think he just wasn't ready, period. They just ran into each other and they fell into old habits. And then when he woke up, he didn't have the desire to be back with him. And I feel like she thought that if she had sex with him, he was going to have the desire to be back with her. And it didn't work like that. So she felt salty that it didn't work like that. Meadow is uh, in her feelings, but she has an art show coming up. So she tries to remain focused, but it's hard. Jabari goes to her apartment to talk to her about the Carmen situation, but she seems distracted. He tells her Carmen and him are no longer friends, but she tells him she feels like things between them are moving too fast. He seems hurt by the situation, but she doesn't want to talk to him about it. Like, she kind of just, like, it's like, I'm trying to get ready for my show. I don't have time for this. Leave me alone. And he doesn't really get to tell her how he really feels. She, like, shoes him away. So, in the next couple of scenes, Meadow and Jabari are both sad without each other, but they try to move on with their lives. She prepares for her show and he works on his comic book. Meadow's manager throws a party for her, but tells her it was just a small event, but when she gets there, it's a big party, like, and she doesn't like big events because she's, like, one of those people that likes to be low-key or whatever. She is an artist, but she doesn't like the bells and whistles that's, that comes with it. She doesn't like that she has to be in the limelight and stuff like that, and I can completely understand that. She's not feeling the party, but she stays since she doesn't have a choice. Her manager tries to get her to lighten up before her show, but she misses Jabari. So it's like, she's just like in a, a sad mood, a, a, you know, a sunken, a sunken state. Jabari finishes his comic book and gets praised by the company and his co-workers. That co-worker that told him Mr. Rachel was too dark apologizes for saying it and tells him he's happy he stayed true to it. He also tells him Mr. Rachel will be the biggest comic book at Cosmic. Meadow runs into one of her photographer friends who tells her that the picture of Jabari is her favorite of her collection. Like, she took pictures of him, and the girl was like, I love this one. Like, this is my favorite one. This is definitely one you should choose. And Meadow is like, she doesn't think it's going to make the cut. And the girl is shocked, and she's like, well, you know better than me. Like, I'm just giving my opinion, but it's your work. You know better than I do. Jabari calls his sister and tells her about Meadow. She visits him to check on him because she could tell he's heartbroken. But he tries to play it off like he isn't. She tells him that he needs to fight for Meadow, but he tells her neither of them were ready for anything serious. His sister isn't buying it, though. She tells him he called her about Meadow, and he rarely calls her on her birthday. She was like, you literally called me to talk about this girl. You're not about to sit here and tell me that she ain't worth you fighting for. You don't even call me. Like, you don't even talk to me about me. You don't check on me. I'm your sister. But you called me about this girl, so obviously she's important. You need to fight for this. He admits that he's hurt and says he's never felt that way about a girl before. And his sister tells him, Love is the easiest thing in the world when it happens by accident, but it doesn't get real until you do it on purpose. And this is the realest love quote I've ever heard before because I feel like people treat love like it's supposed to be this feeling, this like, you're, you, this passionate feeling and you just are like mesmerized by this person and y'all are like, Y'all are enamored with each other and it's always supposed to feel like that. And that's not true. Yeah, sometimes it does happen by accident and you do have that. That's why it's called the honeymoon stage 
when you feel like that about the person or whatever because it's new and like when it's new like y'all are not really digging deep into who y'all are y'all are like just touching the surface most of the time and even if you are digging deep you have this chemistry this connection with this person that makes you that makes you uh respect them for opening up to you but when you get deeper into that relationship and then you get to find out this stuff, even though they've already told you exactly what it is, who they are, you you accepted it at first. But when you actually got to live through it and that honeymoon stage is going, you want to you you see that this is this is hard work. Like this is not what I thought it was going to be because you had those rose colored glasses on in the beginning Instead of seeing things for what they were when y'all were talking, when y'all telling each other about yourselves and taking it, taking, taking it for what they were saying, but you don't do that. You think that, you know, this is just a conversation when it really isn't. And I feel like when, you, when things start to get hard, that really shows you how much you really like love that person or like that person because when, when things start to get hard and the first thing you want to do is run do you even really love that person or did you just like the the part of them that was convenient for you and I think people like what's convenient when it's when it becomes inconvenient and when they take when it's taking you out of what you expect things to be then you want to run. Then you want to find reasons why you and this person shouldn't be together. When really they gave you the information that you needed to make a decision whether you wanted to be with them or not. And instead of just seeing it for what it was, you made up your own. You had your own fantasy about this person in your head. And and now you're stu you were stuck with that. So now they can't live up to this no more because... The honeymoon phase is over. And I feel like that's what this quote is basically saying. Love is easy when it happens by accident. But when it's time to choose it, it's hard. You have to choose it. You have to decide every day, I'm going to love this person. I'm going to love them. Every single day, you have to make that decision. And love is a choice. It's not a feeling. It's not this thing that gives you this rush of energy and you feel like you're high and you're floating on clouds and stuff like that it gets ugly sometimes it's inconvenient a lot of the times and you have to have the patience the the empathy the compassion the respect and even just the love to want to work through it with that person but a lot of people don't they think that it's just all flowers and rainbows and sunshine and it's not it's literally not and just because you're going through hard times in your relationship does not mean that it's y'all are not supposed to be together it just means that you have to work at it that's it but i love that quote because to me it was so real like it was one of the most real love quotes i've ever heard in the next scene, Meadow is at her show, but she isn't having a good time. It seems like she's looking for Jabari to show up. Like she's hoping, like she's hoping that he shows up because she did tell him that she, early on that she was uh preparing for a show. She gave him the date and everything, and he was gonna come and support her. But you know they're not together anymore, so she's like looking for her, even though she didn't. He she didn't really ask him if he was coming, which she should have. She tells her friend he's not coming and her friend asked her if she asked him to come. She says she didn't, but she was hoping he would, but she feels kind of dumb for hoping that. Her friend tells her that the night is about her and she shouldn't feel anything but magic. And she tells her it's okay to be disappointed. She tells her everybody is out there looking for their person. Maybe Jabari is her person, maybe not. But she got to be willing to put herself out there to find out her whether. Oh, she tells her that she got to be willing to put herself out there if finding her person is what she wants. She tells her she tells her she knows that it sucks, but it and it's scary, but it's on her like you have to do this for you like you have to make a move you can't just sit here and wait to see what happens 
So Meadow, it's time for Meadow to give her speech about her feelings about her photography. And while she's giving this speech, Jabari shows up. So she uses that opportunity to express herself about their situation while equating it to photography. So she's like killing two birds with one stone, basically. She's talking about photography, but she's relating it to their situation while relating their situation to photography. Jabari disappears by the time she's done, so she runs off to look for him when she's alone. He's He is outside tagging a billboard. She goes out there and she sees it. She chuckles, then she hails a cab to go to him. Jabari is riding a bike to the same spot she's going. Both of them are having flashbacks of their relationship. They meet at the vegan spot she took him to for lunch the first time they went out. They kiss, and that's the end of the movie. It was a beautiful movie. I've literally watched that, like, maybe four times. I really like it. I think Kid Cudi was in his bag when he created that. And I would love to see more animation from him, especially because that was a... Those were black characters. Those were... And then the other characters were people of color. I want to see more animation with us in it. And I thought that this was a beautiful representation of that. But I love that it was a story about two regular young black people trying to find their place in their careers and society. They both were successful in their careers and they supported each other. And they like hyped each other up, encouraged each other, all of that. Work didn't get in the way of things. Their fear did. It wasn't their careers that got in the way. They just became scared. Whenever something that thing happened with Carmen, she was afraid that she couldn't trust him. Even though he was trying to prove to her, you can trust me, like, nothing happened. Like, I went over there because she called me and said, because Carmen had called him one night randomly, talking about there was a rat in her house and she wanted him to get it out or whatever. And at first, and he went to help her out because, like, they were still friends. Even though he told her he didn't want anything serious with her, they were still friends. So he went to help her out, and there was a rat there or whatever. But nothing happened between them. She didn't, They didn't even stay at her house. She ended up having, she ended up leaving because they were afraid. And he told her she can't stay in her apartment. And that was it. Like, they, nothing happened between them. And he was trying to explain that, but she was afraid because it was like, I can't trust you because you're doing stuff behind my back. And also, I think her fear came from the fact that they didn't have anything set in stone. They were just dating. So I think when you're dating somebody and something like this comes up, you don't really know how you're supposed to feel about it if you're allowed to be upset, if you're allowed to confront them about something like that. Because especially now, when it comes to the way that we date, it's almost like, when you're dating, people want to absolve themselves of accountability. And I feel like that's on both sides, men and women. To absolve themselves of accountability when it comes to how they're interacting with other people. And they make you feel like you don't, you can't say nothing about it because y'all relationship isn't serious. We're not committed to each other, so you don't have a say. And yes, I do. When my feelings are involved with you, I have a say in how this situation goes and if I feel like I'm I'm not okay with you doing certain things I'm going to voice that and the way that you respond to me voicing that is how I'm going to proceed with the situation I'm not gonna I'm not really one of those people that's gonna keep trying in a situation where somebody makes me feel like I can't have feelings about something they did because I feel like that's going to trickle over into your committed relationship. Even if even if it happens when you're... I feel like people shows you who they are, period. If it's a friendship, if y'all are just dating, if it's just a friends with benefits situation, they're still showing you who they are. Thinking that they're going to be different in a committed relationship is where you go wrong. Okay, I said, even though Carmen sent Jabari that sex, she wasn't who got in between them either. It wasn't Carmen that got in between them. Metal was afraid to give her all to him because she was unsure things would work out. And I feel like that's why she gave up so easily. The incident with Carmen was just, just triggered her fears. 
However, I'm happy that they conquered those fears and finally got together, worked things out. I feel like their situation happens a lot in real life. And I love that this movie showed that it wasn't the it, it wasn't these uh, this elaborate story these elaborate backgrounds it was just two regular people living in New York City, trying to find their place in their careers in society and in love, and I love the way that it ended. It was a beautiful story, so I give it a I think I gave it a nine out of ten. I I would watch this so many more times because it was amazing and I I love anime too. So that's another reason why. But um, if you've seen this movie, let me know what you think about it. If you haven't seen it, but you go watch it after you see this video, come back and let me know what you think about it. Do you think that Meadow gave up on their relationship because she was afraid? Or do you think the incident with Carmen is what made uh this situation, their situation uh end? Um, but thank you guys for watching this review. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Before you go, check out my website at srgram.org and subscribe to my mailing list to get exclusive updates on works in progress, other news, and blog posts. Thank you.